Hey everybody, hope you are doing good. I thought I'd just spend a little bit of time here having a bit of a play around with Dreamflow and see if we can kind of get close to replicating an application that I kind of built in Flutterflow. Now, um, if you've been a, a sort of subscriber to my content for some time, you would have seen that I did some videos uh, some time ago that covered building this kind of like uh, this chatbot that allowed me to query um, the OpenAI APIs for the assistant and I can then kind of make uh, sort of have discussions about the content or more focused kind of discussions on a particular topic. So here is the application that I built in Flutterflow here. There is a video, by the way, on my channel that kind of covers the complete creation of this video, uh, sorry, this project from scratch. So um, so here it is just kind of running up a, a slight variation here, but this is the kind of the application running. It's really, really simple. It doesn't have much going for it other than the fact is, is it acts a bit like a chat bot. There's no other kind of screens or anything like that. So it is quite straightforward. So what I thought I would do is I would just take a screenshot of this from the simulator. I'll just pop that over here. And what I did is um, I created a brand new project in Dreamflow. I kind of pasted that screenshot in and I gave it a very, very simple prompt here. Replicate exactly the design of the screen. I want to create an AI assistant chatbot. So it kind of went away, kind of did its thing here. You can see here, this is kind of all the steps it went through during the creation of the project until we get right down to the bottom here, where it's provided me kind of the architecture MD here that's kind of described a little bit about what it's created. And of course, the full summary here of the actual project output and you can see here on the the amount of credits that this particular uh, build took it was a 2.19 which you know anything in dreamflow at this moment by it, it looks like it's creating it, again it depends on the complexity of your prompt here by the way um, but anywhere sort of between maybe sort of two or three credits to be used through to you know eight or nine so um, I'm averaging about five credits per kind of per project build on like a, a medium complexity kind of project so obviously in Flutterflow, you would kind of construct this kind of manually. Generally, there's kind of not so many of the AI features in Flutterflow that will kind of, you know, get you to kind of something that looks like this. So um, this is actually not a bad attempt, actually. It's taken that kind of screen grab and created something that actually looks pretty good, actually, right off the bat. This is certainly usable. It's kind of got the color scheme. Okay, the background looks a little bit darker than what I had. The image that I had at the top here of my, uh, my prompt is, is kind of not there, but we're going to kind of pop that in a second into uh, Dreamflow and then we'll see if we can get that updated um, but generally it's looking pretty good it gave us a good starting point it doesn't really do anything really I mean I can go in here and I can in fact just take the test the inspect mode off like if I just say um, hello in here it's kind of simulating here a kind of response back on the chat but it's clearly not connecting to any live service so I want to see how well the kind of the AI agent works in Dreamflow um, and kind of can can do all of that kind of that work behind the scenes to kind of to, to do what we wanted to do. Now, we when we did this in Flutterflow, we had to hook all of that stuff up ourselves. But we want to see if we can get away with not having to do that by just kind of just telling the agent here the, some simple instructions. So um, that's it. So that's what we're going to kind of do. We're going to see if we can kind of get this thing up and running in this particular video. And um, let's see how well Dreamflow uh, kind of... Uh, sort of covers that and then I've got chat GPT on the right hand side here um, which um, if I've got any particular questions I can use that as I said before um, otherwise I can fall back to the agent and then use up credits there perhaps a part of my subscription with Dreamflow so that's kind of the uh, the kind of the general idea let's now move on to the next bit let's see if we can get the image replaced up here first let's make this a little bit more closer to the uh, to the the, the application there um, I had in Flutterflow Okay, so first thing I'm going to want to do is upload that asset. So I'm just going to move over to this section here. Go to the images and let's upload the asset. Now, I've got this currently on my desktop and I've just pulled this from my Flutterflow project, by the way. So this should upload successfully in just a second. Now, one little handy thing you can do in Dreamflow is you can just kind of right click on this and you can kind of copy path. Now, if I just uh, paste that into just this chat GPT area here, you can kind of see that is the path of my local project to where that uh, image asset is. So we're going to kind of use that to our advantage in just a second. Now, of course, in a kind of Dreamflow, things are somewhat different to how things are in Flutterflow, because in Flutterflow, you can kind of just kind of hover over a particular container. You can kind of get to kind of the Im image. You can kind of set it to be the asset and then you can pull it from your project. But of course, here in uh, Dreamflow, it's not quite as straightforward as that. Now, of course, they'll hopefully maybe improve some of those uh, features in the future. So we're going to have to kind of write code, but it's kind of like I want, it, I want this kind of little 
muck around here to be more focused around kind of people who don't need to write code because not everybody are software developers. They want to kind of, you know, they might want to use this tool because they're uh, kind of learning their way through maybe the Flutter uh, sort of framework. But um, I want to see if we can focus on this being more kind of no code based. I'm going to kind of use the power of GT, Church GPT on the right hand side here. Or I could just use the agent here and say, hey, I've just uploaded this particular image that's located this particular path. Now go and re replace the image in the container. That's going to cost me credit. So if you're happy to utilize the credit to do that, that's fine. But what we'll do is we'll just um, make a little change here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, let's see how well this does it. So let's close that down here. Let's go into the code view. Now, if I, this is the bit where we, we're calling out to the, um, I think that is it, yeah, that is the network image there. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna take this particular container and I'm just gonna say, right, okay, let's just paste. So I would like to replace the network image with a local asset like that. So my code, and then I'm just gonna go in here, paste that in here. And if I just go back to my images, here and uh, go to images and just right click and say copy path okay uh, local asset path I'm just gonna do that like that so so what it's gonna do is just gonna go away and kind of like you know rewrite that code for me so here it is you can see it's quite simply just kind of replaced that image there with asset image so what I should just really be able to do then is just go back in here copy the whole lot let's just shut down the properties here and I can literally just replace it with this there it is like that now, if I just save that, let's just go back to the preview, and there it is. So we have our, our, our prompt uh, kind of image in there already. So you can kind of see how, now, like I said, I could have just gone and used um, kind of uh, uh sort of the agent here to kind of do that but i didn't want to use up any of my credits because again if you've got like 100 credits and you're building on quite a uh you know quite a, a big application you're going to kind of swallow those up quite quickly so again use chat EPT or something equivalent there to kind of help you along the way to write some of the code because technically that's really all we're doing in dreamflow is really just kind of just changing that code let's go back to inspect mode here let's just go here let's go to the properties and of course, you can come in here and you can kind of, at this point, you can kind of do, this is, you know, which is great. This is very similar now to Flutterflow. Kind of, you can kind of go in here now and you can kind of, you know, kind of change the uh, the kind of the properties here of the actual um, the actual image. So you can kind of just come in here and just say fit the height. So that's nicely positioned. So there is kind of elements in Dreamflow, which is very similar to Flutterflow, where you can kind of get in here and just sort of change properties and kind of visually then see the, uh, the output of that. And of course, this is clearly changing code behind the scenes as well. So there we go. We've got the image up there, which is really good. Now, this application doesn't really do a lot at the moment. So um, I'm going to kind of probably break it now by uh, kind of getting it to now kind of set itself up so I can actually do and, and have the conversation, should we say, with the uh, with the open AI platform and using the assistant uh, API. So hopefully there's enough knowledge um, in, the, in the back end uh, in the LLM that can help us out here. So um, I'm just going to come back to this and uh, in the next section okay so here we go then i've just cry i crafted a prompt there and i've just kind of got rid of chat gpt for the moment because we're not going to be using that i've just gone to the agent now because this is going to be quite a substantial change to this application you can see here that i've just put the prompt in there uh, requesting what I need it to do. I've added in my assistant ID. So this is obviously what would be provided from the platform dot open a uh, open AI sort of uh, dashboard. And I've also put my open AI key in there, which is um, which is again is my API key, which is going to be super important. So um, I'm just going to hit enter on this now. I'm just going to leave this to kind of uh, to do its thing. And then we'll come back and we'll see what has happened. Okay. Oh my gosh, what's happened? Okay, so here we go. So Dreamflow has gone off, or at least the agent's gone off and completely changed stuff that I never really asked it to do. So maybe, here we go, this is where I wasn't particularly specific in my instru in my instructions. So it's gone and removed out my little, uh, my graphic that's at the top. It's gone and relabeled my application and gave it a new kind of title here underneath. And it's added in this like refresh button. So clearly it's gone away and gone and done far more than what I was expecting. Um, and then also as well, you can see here that instantly, um, 
that it clearly can see here that probably the the the, the kind of hard coded values have kind of been removed. But now I'm left with this whopping great error. And it looks like what's happened here is that our API key is there in the background. It is referenced, but it looks like it's gone in kind of uh, kind of asterisk in replace of some of the key information. So clearly it's going to get itself pretty upset with that. So um, right, I'm going to have to correct that. So I'm just going to go and prompt a update that to try and correct out the API key. We don't really want that. And then we'll come back and we'll see then what has uh, happened. Okay, so that's all done. Um, I've just scrolled this up on the right-hand side, by the way, so I don't expose my um, my open AI key. So let's now try chatting. Let's see if this is going to work. Um, I'm just going to say hello like that. Let's see what happens. Am I going to get an error back? Okay, that looks a little bit positive. Okay, all right. So um, so in my assistant, I've actually got a, a file in there, which is kind of like a prompt engineering guide. So I'm going to ask who the author of the document and who is the author of the document like that. Send that. And that should come back with uh, somebody called Lee. Perfect. Excellent. So this is now almost in line with the tutorial that um, I put up recently on my channel. So that looks um, pretty good. I'm um, clearly we've kind of got these references here. And, and in that particular tutorial, that Flutterflow tutorial, by the way, I just created a custom function to kind of remove these out. But um, I think this is kind of demonstrating something really good is the fact is that I was able to um, continue um, uh, kind of like uh, building out this application um, from uh, so let me just rephrase that a little bit. So what I've been able to do here is I've been able to um, bypass all the creation of all of the equivalent sort of Flutterflow logic that I put in very manually. So I had to go through each stage of the way the assistant works. And of course, it's now doing this all by itself. Now, I don't know whether it's going to maintain the context of the message. So as you know, with a thread, once you create a thread, then then that is you keep you, you would keep I'm passing that back to OpenAI. It will keep that conversation uh, and know the context of the conversation. So I'm assuming at this particular stage of that thread ID is persisted in my application. Um, and I wonder whether I can say, what was the last question I provided? Now it should say, well, you asked me the uh, what the author of the document was. Yeah, excellent. So therefore, it definitely is maintaining my thread ID, which is absolutely perfect. So that is really good. This has been a really good little experiment, actually, because, um, you know, creating something and then just letting uh, Dreamflow go off and kind of set all of that service layer up has been uh, something very, very straightforward by me just simply providing that very, very simple prompt. So um, let's go and have a look around and just um, see if we can expect some of the code that's being generated here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is bring my uh, my container back that we had before that um, AI very kindly decided to remove for me. So just pop that back in here. And I'm just going to change this box fit as well. And of course, you've got the IntelliSense on here, which is really quite nice as well. You can say fit height there, which is what I think what I had. If I go back to the preview, then hopefully if I just do a little, uh, little refresh there. Um, hopefully my uh, picture will come back. No. Oh, look at that. I didn't hit the uh, save option, did I? Let me just hit save. Must remember to do that. There it is. I've got me AI uh, image back. So that's pretty good. So let's just go back to the code view again. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. So we know we've got our screen here, which is the only screen that we have in our application. We've got this widgets folder, which is going to contain the components, should we say, the other widgets that's going to make up our user interface here. We've got the chat header, which is the one that we just looked at. We've got the chat input, which is uh, just down the bottom. It's that little kind of little, little text field, which actually, if I'm, if I'm honest with you, actually looks nicer than what I've got got in this particular uh, area here it's a little bit more in keeping perhaps with a with a mobile application if you look at this here I just got a split view it looks um just a little bit more I don't know it feels a bit more apple like I guess so that's quite nice um so that's really good um what else let's just go back let's just take off back to the code view here and then we've got the chat message bubble, which is clearly the widget which is going to be passing in the actual chat message itself. We've got this little copy option here, so it's kind of like a, a callback function on the copy. So um, that again, very lightweight component, um, which is which is really good. Um, and really, there's not really much more uh, to it. We've got the Open AI config. Now this is going to kind of expose out, um, no doubt, the API key that um, I had uh, I actually added, and possibly as well in we've got the models here, which is the chat 
chat message, which again is really just kind of more uh, there to kind of allow me to have the, the string, if it's determine whether it's from a user or not, or it's a system one, and it's got the timestamp in there as well. So it's a really, really simple kind of little chat message. But again, I don't want this to be a coding tutorial, but at least um, you can kind of see that it's breaking everything down really, really nicely here into the folders. So there is me uh, open AI config. There is me API key here. There's chop chops off at the end there. I don't need to worry too much about that. So it's kind of set up some of these kind of details. I know that um, people are a little bit more sort of seasoned in Flutterflow or in other tools are probably thinking, oh my gosh, you've got like API keys that's kind of like, you know, built into the project. There is other ways here to kind of protect yourself from uh, kind of exposing API keys. That's kind of another video, but this is really just kind of more of a just a little play around in Dreamflow. Um, but you need to be mindful of the fact is that you want to be careful here in, in bundling those kind of API keys up into your application you need to find ways to kind of protect your application in terms of exposing those uh, things to your users so um, you might want to make sure that um, you may want to introduce some kind of service layer. You could use a kind of maybe a workflow tool or something like that. It could be something like NAN, which could act as a proxy that you could kind of send the request down to. And then that then goes off itself and then calls out to OpenAI. The response comes back to that and then returns it back to your application, um, where it means that you don't need to bundle up your API keys um, with your application. But that's far beyond the scope of this particular play around, really. So um, other than that, yeah, so it's, it's, it's written all the code um, here perfectly for us. So again, I'm not going to kind of delve too deep into this. But again, if you're not a coder, you could easily copy and paste this into something like ChatGPT and say, oh, could you explain a little bit more about this particular function? Um, but it looks really clean and tidy. And, uh, and one thing that's really nice, again, about Dreamflow is that this uh, kind of editor here is, um, is all, you know, all colored up. It's, um, it's, it's a startup quite nicely. So it's actually really pleasing to, to kind of use, really, as you would expect. Yeah, almost Visual Studio Code-esque with a particular theme on. So, so that's pretty good. So there, yeah, and then obviously we've got our kind of our, our sort of our entry level sort of files, and then we've got our sort of theme file. We can adjust the colors and all this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good little start here. I'm quite pleased with the application just for a, a first initial little kind of take something I built in Flutterflow. How quickly can I get it up and running in here from a screen grab? And as you can see, it's up and running and it's um, serviceable. So uh, there you go. So hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, very, very quick and very brief look at uh, kind of Dreamflow once more i'm going to carry on learning the product because this is so new so fresh um, there's clearly going to be best ways and best practices to use this and i'd also like to do some uh, some more video content on you know transitioning your use from something like flutterflow into dreamflow how can you get yourself up and up and running really quickly in dreamflow um, because um, Dreamflow does allow you to go much, much more uh, sort of low level um, in terms of kind of building out some more more bespoke features to your application. So, um, you know, but the tools are very different. So that's so so. But, it, but it's certainly going to be good to uh, to see how Flutterflow users start using something like Dreamflow. So there we go. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, again, if you are a if you're watching this on YouTube, please do like the video. Give it a massive great thumbs up. I really do appreciate um, the likes on the videos because it then it gets these videos out to the wider community because it does really quite surprise me how so many people watch my content, but they aren't actually subscribers uh, to, to my content. So, um, of course, if you are one of those people who perhaps haven't subscribed, then please do hit the subscribe button. I really do appreciate that. It really helps the channel grow um, and encourages me to produce more video content. Content, but your likes are super important as well because it hopefully beats the uh, YouTube algorithm. Um, but of course, if you're a member of the Digital Pros No Code Academy, uh, I also appreciate you uh, spending the time in the Academy as well. So uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.